about motherhood. One minute, your mom of the year. I love you, mommy. Then the next? <laughs> mm, not so much. From bath time to bullying, from potty training to puberty, parenting is full of challenges. But one thing is for certain, you are not alone. Welcome to Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, author, mother, parenting expert, Tara Clark. Join me while we tackle today's Modern Mom Problems. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, Tara Clark. Today, I am joined by one of the funniest women I know. Elise DeLucci is a businesswoman, stand-up comedian, host of the hilarious podcast, The Elise DeLucci Show, and mother to two adorable girls. Elise, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh my God, what an honor. Thank you. You are welcome. So I also want to start off by saying I'm wearing the Lady Gaga lip gloss that we had talked about last time when we had dinner together. It's like House of Gaga or something like that, right? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, Yeah, it's House Laboratories. So a little thing about Elise and I, we are both Italian-American just like Lady Gaga. And a few months ago, we had dinner together and I was singing the praises of the Lady Gaga lip gloss. Not that that's sponsored by this, but Gaga, if you hear me, (laughs) just you could throw some lip gloss our way. But I just wanted to start out the interview by saying my lips are nice and moisturized by the, the House of Gaga lip gloss. So it's nice that you have like $20 lip gloss on as I'm wearing a 99 cent wet and wild lip liner story of the mother. (laughs) (laughs) Some days we're wearing the most expensive makeup. And then the other days it's like, all right, whatever just crap I just picked up off the floor will do. (laughs) Sometimes that happens to me with like an old, like you'll find like an old makeup bag and you're like, how old is this stuff? I don't know if that ever happens to you, but it's like really old lip liners or really old lip glosses and stuff like that. But But I do have to say, this Gaga stuff I buy on Amazon, so it's actually not so crazy. Oh, that's not bad. I love that. Yeah, and she always runs deals. I don't know why. Like, (laughs) well, she probably doesn't. She doesn't need the money from her makeup. That's what it is. (laughs) She's like, it's like it's like five bucks. So anyway, Elise Delucci, you, my friend, are a stand-up comedian. I want you to tell everybody a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So. I kind of had a really non-traditional way of doing stand-up. I was always a stand-up fan. I always was very theatrical. I was like a thespian, you know, when I was growing up. But, you know, I did the the normal road, you know, high school, college, graduation, got my first job down in the financial district. I worked a corporate job and I, you know, I got married, I had kids and it was only until, and I, I should say I dabbled a little bit here and there in performance stuff. I was doing maybe a community theater, a little improv, whatever. And then I was at a stock exchange, I was working at stock exchange for about eight years, but early into my time there, you know, I was so overwhelmed with work and I started doing improv actively as an outlet. And then I had an improv teacher that said, hey, why don't you do stand-up comedy? And then that led to me trying stand-up. And I had one night, you know, at like 1130 at night in the attic of the improv theater, the, the People's Improv downtown. And and Gramercy. And um, I was like hooked because I got such a great reaction. And so, you know, I stuck with it. And now it's been six years. And I should say, I should caveat that at the time I was having marriage problems. So it re- so stand up was really like a catharsis for me. So yeah, I mean, I have my professional, I should say, well, I'm a professional stand up comedian, but my nine to five traditional trajectory was in digital media. And then I went over to the client side on, in finance and I'm a stand-up comedian. And that's the story there. I love it. I love it. And you are also divorced. Yes, I am divorced. We're going to talk about today. You speak really favorably about your ex-husband. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like the story there. And obviously you mention him often in your act and you mentioned your daughters, which I want to dra- get into that because I absolutely like love the, the, the culture clash that happens there. So how do you and your husband put your differences aside and co-parent? 
Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, let me just say, I guess like for divorce, divorce wise, I really married like my best friend. I mean, you know, let me just say that I married my best friend. I totally was in love with this guy when I met him, but he was my best friend. He knew all my secrets. It was like, you know, when people say, oh, marry for love and lust, it's like, no, don't do that. Love and lust is not enough. I married my best friend. We had a great marriage. Once we had children, we started having issues. And we got divorced when my daughters were, we have two girls together, Irish twins. And they were, I think, three and four or like almost five and three, you know, like something like, I can't really remember the exact age. But um, yeah, I mean, we got divorced and we decided that we were going to be co-parents. I mean, my ex, well, first of all, my ex-husband, he only lives about, we live in Manhattan on the Upper East Side. He only lives about four blocks away. So proximity wise, it works. And my daughters adore, they're daddy's girls. They adore him, you know, and he is the most selfless father ever. You know, our marriage problems were not because of, you know, his lack of parenting or anything like that. Our marriage problems were because we were fighting all the time after we had kids. We weren't getting along. I was overtaxed at work, you know, but all all the reasons why people get divorced. But co-parenting was just sort of a natural decision. It was like, okay, it's year 2000 something. We are not going to be together, but we are still a family and we're going to raise our children together. I also should say that when I got divorced, I was not working a corporate job at the time. I was taking some time off. I had also recently lost my father. I I had a lot of stuff going on. I was really sort of evaluating my life. Where do I want to go? What do I want to do? And I I, I don't want to say I was have I was in the middle of a breakdown, but I really was at a low point in my life. And to be honest, if I didn't do co-parenting, I don't know how I would have survived being on my own with the children because I really was going through a lot. We have a nanny, we share the nanny, but the co-parenting was the right decision then. And even though now today it's been, I don't know, maybe three, four years of us not being together, even though today I still have those moments of like, did I make the right decision? I want my girls living with me 24 seven. They're girls. What the hell? I miss them. But then I just think, no, this is the best for them. And they're four blocks away, you know? So we, we, we see them even on the, the weeks that we do not have them, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that totally makes sense. How about your family? Like, was your family helpful throughout your divorce? I mean, the real answer is no. I mean, you know, if I'm going to be honest, you know, my mother is divorced and my mother and my father got divorced when I was 17. I have two younger sisters. One of my, one of my sisters is four years younger than me. And I have another sister that's 15 years younger than me, all from my, the same parents. But my mom Kind of because she had me, you know, at, at like 21 and then she had another baby 15 years later. Like my mom, by the time I got divorced and had my two little girls, my mom was kind of like, okay, the only thing I'm interested in doing is go to Atlantic City and having a scotch on the rocks. Like that was like my mom, my mother was like, my parenting <laughs> days are over. So, my mom is hardened. I mean, the real, the real story is like I me, mean, my mom, she would kill me if she heard me say this, but she's really like kind of hardened. Like she had a terrible divorce. Well, my father and her got divorced. Like she, he just like, he got lost essentially. They had just a, just so many issues and no, she wasn't really that helpful. And I don't know if that's because I'm the oldest, you know, adult child and I've always been pretty like autonomous and self like resilient, or if it's because she was just too wrapped up in her enjoying her own, you know, freedom for the first time at like 60 years old or whatever. But no, she was not helpful. My mom, she lives in New Jersey. She It's about two and a half hour drive from the Upper East Side. I mean, she definitely listened to me talk on the phone and all that stuff, but she's, you know, she wasn't helpful. I mean, I, 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 if I didn't have, my nanny almost stepped in as like a mother to me, you know, and she was, she was helpful you know, just like every other woman woman in Manhattan, I have a, a shrink. You know, my shrink was helpful. My girlfriends were helpful. The boxes of wine that I had delivered from Drizzly, not an advertiser here, also <laughs> was helpful. I mean, so, you know, yeah, no, I did it. I really, we did it on our own. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And you know, what? something that we always say at Modern Mom Probs is like, yes, it takes a village, but it's not necessarily your blood family that is that village, right? right? Like we make our own village. It may be our therapist. It may be our friends. It may be the new mom that you met at the playground on the Upper East Side. You know, we make our own villages. And 
And let me say that on that note, like, I think this is an important thing to say for women and moms in general. Like, I after my second daughter was born, because I had them so close in age, which was planned, I had really bad postpartum depression. I didn't realize it at the time. I didn't even know what postpartum really was. I knew I heard about it. I knew it was like women, they cry or they didn't want to touch the baby. I didn't even know what that was. I didn't really have that per se. I was just like, I just felt like, I wasn't a mom. It was the weirdest thing. I just felt like I'm not a mom. Like this is not who I, I was felt like I didn't have children. It was like, not, not, I was acting like I didn't have children. I would, I couldn't internalize like Elise. And then like Elise is also a mom and Elise is also an employee and a sister and a daughter and a friend. I couldn't get my head around it. And I really struggled, particularly after my second daughter, because my best friends all live in Staten Island and New Jersey and they all live, you know, down the block from their mother or they all live, you know, in their mother's basement. And these are my best girlfriends and we would give each other the shirt off their back. But I was watching almost like a, like on the outside of a snow globe. I was watching inside this snow globe. All of my friends have their village of their mom, their grandma, who's bringing food for the house, who's dropping off what? Oh, you need to have somebody take the baby to the doctor. Let me come. Oh my God, the baby's not eating. Let me, let me rush over there. I was not jealous of that. I was envious of that, but I also felt like I, I had this deep, deep like black hole inside me that I wanted that. And that really caused a big aspect of my postpartum depression. And I fought and clawed to try to have the village. But like I would knock on the door, you know, and my mom would be like, I'm busy, you know, and it would be like, what are you doing? You busy, you know, or like my younger sister's 15 years younger. She's like, do you, do I want to come to the city and help with the baby? No, I'm going to the Jersey shore. That is what I'm doing. Like I have no interest, you know? So yeah, I had to make my own village and it's, it's, it's a still a village in progress because, you know, at different life stages, people are there and then they're not, you know, so it's, it's hard, but, but my ex and I started as a serious unit. We were always great friends. We were always good, like business partners together and we still are. So even though we're not married, we, we are like just in lockstep. And I admire him. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything that I do today if I didn't have him by my side, even though, you know, we're not together. This podcast is brought to you by Citizens of Sound, a podcast production agency committed to developing and launching shows with gravity and depth. From conception to launch, Citizens will partner with you every step of the way, whether you're an actor, business owner, doctor, fitness coach, influencer, or simply a hobbyist. Citizens offers everything from conception to branding, editing to mixing, and publishing to management. Jump on board with Citizens of Sound and start your own podcast today. Go to citizensofsound.com and follow them on Instagram. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Y- your story really mirrors my story as well. Whereas like I didn't have support from family after my my son was born and my my mom came with my mother-in-law. They came together for like one day and after after my son was born. And you know what they did? They went and they got their eyebrows threaded and then they were right. gone for like two hours. And I got to the point where I was like, where'd you, where'd you guys go? Like you mm-hmm. guys, and at that point we were living in the Upper East Side, only a few blocks away from where you are. And they they came to help out, went th- to get their eyebrows done, were gone for like an hour or two, came back. And I was like, Where, what, what, what's, what's going on here? Like, I wasn't like mean, but I kind of was yeah. just like, I mean, I should be the one getting my eyebrows done, right? Right, right. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then they, and then they left like for the day. And then that, that was it. That was their coming to help me with the baby. I think I took a shower. That's what I recall. I recall taking a shower, which let me tell you, was a really good shower because I hadn't showered at that point in a really long time. So like- I I remember those showers. That was a good (laughs) shower. That was like a really nice shower. But yeah, no, I I think it's so important to build your own village when you don't have that in-person, you know, Yeah. And you know what? Isn't it so funny because it's like, First of all, what you do, I should say, on your Instagram page with Modern Mom Props, I mean, you know, obviously I have to give you a super props for that and have to say thank you because you 
not only do things, say things that make us laugh as moms, it's like that, you know, it's like that dopamine hit. Like you log onto your Instagram, you scroll, you see people like in Turks and Caicos, you're like, why aren't I there? And then you see like modern mom probs and you're like, oh my God, like this is hilarious. Or you see that, or you see a post that's like, you could do it, you could do it. And you're like, okay, like even though I have American cheese slices stuck to like everywhere and I probably haven't changed my underwear in 92 hours, like, you know what, this lady's (laughs) making me feel normal. So it's like, which, by the way, I do change my underwear every day. Just like, just got to say that. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, funny that you said that one time I wrote a meme about like not changing your clothes in three days or something like that. And then people like got mad. They were like, you yeah. have to change your clothes. I was like, I know that it's a joke. It's hyperbole. We're making yeah, a joke. Yeah, it's total. I know. People are so like hilarious. I know. But you know, it's like I, the village thing and co-parenting go together because some people that don't have great co-parenting relationships have more of a village. And so then I feel like my ex and I have a better co-parenting relationship because we don't have a village. And his, by the way, mother and father live in Wales. Like, you know, like not the the mammal under the sea, of course, <laughs> you know, like obviously like in the, in the country that's off the Irish sea. So it's like, I, uh, my mom though, like, I mean, she would, die if she heard what I'm saying. But like, I remember having my, when I had my first daughter, before I had my second daughter, I went to go look at homes in New Jersey. We were looking in Monmouth County, New Jersey. And I remember we were looking like the rum scenario, little silver, like really pretty. Very and fancy. Like, very fancy. Well, you know, the ex is British. I mean, to me, I'll be like, you'll be, I'll be like, build me a mansion on the Staten Island dump. I'm good. But, but, uh, he, you know, we had, I had to like cater to both. So we, we went out there and my mother had the, my baby, my new baby for the day. And my daughter was only five weeks old. I'll never forget this. We looked at 14 houses in one day, which is like, you know, you know how mind how blowing, yeah. mind blowing. And at the end of the 14, you know, cause it was like, you know, we're New York people come, 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 go, go, go got to do it. Gotta do. It was all about making the transaction. And at the end of the 14 houses, we stopped in Red Bank to have a bite to eat. And I'll never forget, my mother called my phone and she said to me, where are you? And I was just like, ah, uh, we're getting a slice of pizza. And she was just like, are you done looking at houses? And I said, yes. And she was like, get back here right now. I have things to do. I have to go shopping. I have to... And I was just like, oh my God, here I am in New Jersey looking to make a big investment to buy a house so I could live near her. So my children, my and my current, my daughter at the five week old daughter and my future children, we could all live near grandma and grandpa, whatever. We can all do the whole thing. And she, it was the one first time babysitting and she was freaking the F out that I was, that I was gone for like four hours. And I said to my, I went, I mean, we had a huge fight. And of course, you know, I was a new mom. Like I was still probably like crazy with pregnancy hormones. And I went to the house and I took my daughter and I said, you know what? We're going home. I said, you know what? This plan is over. I am not moving here because this is not going to be helpful. This is what you're showing me on the first day. And that at that moment, I realized I'm, I'm on my own here. Like I really, I'm on my own. And I, you know, again, I cannot censor this episode, but I'm sure it'll find her somehow. She, (laughs) my daughters now are seven and six and my mom is a great grandmother. She loves her grandchildren. She's always buying them things, which I don't need things, but that's, we all are on the same page with that. I'm pretty sure. But she doesn't pick them up like to visit. Like I just, this past weekend, I took them to her house. I had to drive them there, and which is fine, but it's two hours away. I don't even have a car. So I'd have my boyfriend drive. And so it's like, I just, I just really need my ex-husband and he really needs me because we yeah. got his parents at a 3,000 miles away. And my mom, who's loves the Borgata at, in Atlantic City. So <laughs> it's like we, my ex and I, you know, we, we respect each other. We love each other. We, we, and we have a real schedule for co-parenting. I think that that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. You know, I am a child of a divorced family and luckily my parents, well, they didn't get along at all, but they did have in-person villages. So so I spent so much time with my grandparents on both sides, on my mother's side and on my father's side. And I think you're 100% right that either you have that village, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever, or you co-parent together, you know, and, and, and if people are blessed enough to have both, then that's fantastic, more power to them. But I definitely see that parallel there that it's not necessarily the case. So now you mentioned a boyfriend. May mm-hmm. I ask, so what's it like once you start introducing new lovers into the mix here? 
Oh God, what a what a horror that is! I mean, now I you know I was very well, and you know there's like the there's like the very practical answer I feel like, and then there's like you know the the real answer. The practical answer is you know when I waited. You know, I waited a long time. I thought the guy was great. My, you know, I said he's. This is a great guy. He's safe. He's normal. I met his family. They are a nice Italian family from Long Island. I, you know, everything. So, you know, and then I felt like, okay, we're probably serious or going to be serious. You know, whatever. We're moving and seem to be moving in that direction. L- let me introduce. You know, and we we went to a pizzeria and we we made the visit. You know, only like one hour, and he brought the kids like a little chachka, you know, just whatever. It, you know, it was very like that. But the but but like is it hard? Yeah, like it's just so hard. Like having a man in my life like and you know now we've been together for a, a few years, just a couple years, so it's whatever, but having a man in my life like and the girls like especially now that they're getting older, it's it's difficult. Because, you know, they're like, well, why didn't it, why do we have to be, you know, why do we have to be with you and your boyfriend? Like, why can't like daddy be here? And it's not like it's me and my boyfriend, you know, it's just like, well, because we're going to the zoo and he and mommy's boyfriend also likes animals. So he would like to come and or, you know, like mommy's boyfriend also wants to go to the Met and, you know, and and he's going to take us for lunch after. So it will be really nice. Like we don't really like do a lot of hanging around the house together and like that kind of thing. But we do go out and do things. It's definitely an interesting dynamic though but because I got divorced when my kids were young which obviously has their pluses and minuses it one of the pluses of that is that this is just what they know now you know like they know like that mommy has a boyfriend and you know and daddy has a girlfriend but I will say it's very helpful because my boyfriend doesn't have he was never married and he doesn't have any children so Again, pluses and minuses to everything. It would be nice if they had little like friends to play with if he had kids, but it's actually better because it's he's able like it, it's like they're they're just like the center of attention at all times. So it's nice, but I wouldn't say it's ideal, you know? It's I like that I'm able to date and have a relationship, but it's not ideal. If I wasn't with him, I would like say we broke up tomorrow. I mean, we're not, but say we broke up tomorrow, I wouldn't introduce anybody else to my daughters, not just because I don't need the revolving door. I don't want them remembering when they're like 15 or 17 or or 30. Oh yeah. Mommy just had, you know, suitor after suitor walking through our Upper East Side apartment. Like (laughs) revolving door in my life. (laughs) Yeah. It totally makes sense. One time, this is, this is a, a funny story. I remember I was like a little kid and I was at a pool party with my father and there was a girl that he was introducing me to who he must have like maybe dated a long time ago. And, and he was like, oh, don't you remember Cheryl? And I was like, no. And the thing, the point was that he had so many different girlfriends. Right. <laughs> and I was like, I don't remember Cheryl because she You're like, be I thought anything. it was Susan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know what, though? I I will say my ex, so it's funny, my boyfriend is Italian-American. My ex-husband has a girlfriend for over a year and she's British, you know, and it's like, of course, of course, that's why we get divorced. Of course, that's why we got divorced because I probably didn't say the sexy things he needed to hear in the bedroom. Like, oh, baby, give me some of that crumpet. You know what I'm saying? Like, (laughs) and she, and she clearly does that, you know, but I can't (laughs) I can't stand her. I mean, like, I know, you know, like, this is, like, so terrible because I'm sure, like, girls, like, who, like, girls for that are listening that are, like, the new girlfriend or, like, the stepmom, you're probably like, oh, God, this is one of the crazy ones. Well, you know what? Somebody has to be a crazy one. No, she also, she's, she's the same age as myself. She doesn't have children either. She's never been married. She says she doesn't want to have children, yet she seems to plan, like, very elaborate things for my kids and you know, and, and, and she, she does a lot of, I, what I think in some ways is like stepping over boundaries. Like, you know, like she just, she's very good to them. My ex's new girlfriend, but, but she's like, like they had this thing, for example, where she was gonna, there's this fairy and the fairy is named Mia. I don't know why. And this fairy lives in a small like shoebox and the fairy, the shoebox like goes in like from park to park around Manhattan and, and the kids run around the park and they find the little fairy in the shoebox. Now that's like so adorable and so creative and you know, da da. but it's like, 
then I got my kids at home being like, where's Mia the fairy? And it's like, I don't know. Why don't you go ask your father's girl? And I don't say that. Yeah. Stuff, but that's what I want to say. Like she's almost cre- has created some like so magical experiences that like mommy can't compete with because I'm in the kitchen in a side pony holding a martini and a magic eraser. And it's like, I don't have time for Mia. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, who, like, you know, like I don't, there's that. The other thing though, and you know, is I like everybody, but this girl seems to be a little, you know, fancy British, you know, because all of a sudden my ex-husband who who was fine to go to the diner and have a grilled cheese with me now says things like, don't, that would be ghastly to eat there, you know, or like some (sighs) stuff like that. So I just know that she's, you know, she got in his head. Yeah, a little bit, a little little bit. So, but they, they like her and I did have to, though, put a squash to every time my children were with him and her. You know, anytime she was around his house, she would bring them a present, you know? And then they started saying to me, Mommy, well, we really like Daddy's girlfriend because she always buys us a present. And that was like a real thing. Like, she, this lady was doing that for a good six months. And I know she probably just had good intentions. But I had to really have serious conversations on, like, we don't like people that give us presents because that, that that's one step away from man in the white van has lollipops come yeah, in, and, you know, sure. So I'm a little like freaked out that, about his new girlfriend, but I do think it's probably because I'm the mom and no matter, I mean, look, it's 2022, like dads are, and moms are just as important, but it's like, I grew those kids inside my stomach. Like nobody's changing that. And that's, that's the facts. And like, you know, the fact that there's another woman, you know, like trying to make these, it, you know, it's like back off, back off home girl. Like this is my family, like including your boyfriend. He's my family. Like, you know, so I, I, I got to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Modern Mom Style Box. Upgrade your wardrobe and enjoy unlimited styles for just $60 a month. Modern Mom Style Box is the first rental clothing subscription designed exclusively for moms and moms-to-be. Get started today with a free trial. Use promo code PTO. (gasps) Oh my God, I love it. I love it. Okay, so having said that, Elise, what are some of your tips for effective co-parenting? I think that you, okay, tips, real tips. Like you have to be respectful towards the other parent. My ex-husband, I think after 5 p.m., he has like 25 Guinnesses and he's like, you tell them shitty things about me. And I'm like, no, I don't. But like, I really do tell my daughters like, we love daddy. Oh my God, it's Father's Day. What are we going to do? Oh my God, let's like make, like we make a fruit cake every Christmas because it's the British tradition. You know, it's like, let's make, we got to make daddy the fruit cake. You know, so it's like showing the respect is I think can, like key in co-parenting and even obviously in just divorce because, you know, my mother would be like that, your father's a piece of shit. And I would be like, oh, okay, that's nice. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Yes. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? no, I do. I understand. I would never say that to my kids. Like, I'm like, you would be lucky to marry somebody like daddy one day. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell my girls. Keeping a consistent schedule is important. Communicating. Sometimes, you know, communicating is hard because you have to be disciplined. Like sometimes, you know, you can easily over communicate because you're so used to that person being your spouse, you know? So it's like keeping the communication, but with boundaries. So like we tend to only talk about like the kids, unless of course I'm having like a meltdown, which happens a few times a week, then he'll take my call because, you know, (laughs) I think just having the focus on the kids which of course is hard because he has a girlfriend and a job and I have a boyfriend and like 10 jobs. I think also keeping the same rules is like really important. So, you know, we have the same bedtimes, you know, in both houses. We do, you know, before bed, it's like they get like milk and like one cookie, you know, or we the, the, the lunch time is the same, dinner time's the same. Like it wouldn't work I don't think it wouldn't be healthy for the children, but it also wouldn't be healthy for us. Like as this like family unit, separated family unit, if we were like, you know, he, they European dinner at 9 PM, but at mommy's house, we eat at five. So I think it's really like about communicating, being in lockstep, parent disciplining the same, like we don't believe in like hitting our children, you know, and they, so like that kind of thing, we believe in talking, you know, we read the same parenting books. There's a great book 
called how to talk so your kids will listen and how to listen so they'll talk like that. We both read that book, you know, and and, and kudos to him because he was the one that found the book and told me about it. So, you know, we both follow these kind of things and we send each other like memes also like throughout the day. I mean, we send each other the memes when, when the iPhone memories thing pops up, you know, like just this morning, he sent me one, you know, when they were babies. So I think having that dynamic as co-parents like really creates like a loving environment, but I'm not an expert. I mean, I'm just doing this from you know, like just, this is the first go. I mean, I remember when we were first co-parenting, you know, my mother would be like, you're weird with your ex-husband. You're weird with him the way you talk to him every day. But it would be like, mom, like what, what am I going to do? Like he's the father of my children. So th- that would be like my tips. And I'm, I'm a work in progress. Like I don't, you know, I mean, some days the kids eat Cheetos for dinner and they just don't tell daddy. So, you know, right. that happens. Exactly. <laughs> they could have trumpets the next morning at his house. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I definitely think that's a generational thing, though. You know, and that's why I like to talk about it as modern mom probs, right? Because like our mom and our grandmother would, I think, treat ex-husbands differently than our generations do. All right. We're going to mix it up. Ready, Elise? We're going to go into this. our rapid fire, fun, get to know your questions. Okay. Here we go. First question. What's your favorite 90s movie? Okay, so I probably don't have one because I really have a penchant for 1960s movies like Barbara Streisand and Funny Girl. So, <laughs> okay, we'll take that. Okay. <laughs> that you, you totally threw me off on that one because I did not think you were going there on that, but oh, that's totally okay. fine. What's your favorite self-grooming thing? Probably a combination between my tweezer and my razor because if I didn't, I would look like a hairy monster. <laughs> Oh my God, you're so funny. And you can't see it right now because this is audio only. She has the most gorgeous eyebrows. <laughs> like your eyebrows are exquisite. Thank you. Thank you. Exquisite. Thank you. What is your favorite cartoon character? Ooh, that's a hard one. I love the sass of Peppermint Patty from Charlie Brown. I love Marge Simpson. I like a lot of the moms, Marge Simpson. And then I like like the the, the mean divas like Ursula from Little Mermaid. Oh, yeah. yeah. All good. All good picks. Yeah. What's your favorite comfort food? Oh, I mean, anything that goes in my mouth is a comfort food. Like, like, because I have no <laughs> butter. I would, I'm gonna go with butter or macaroni. Like, you know, like yes. pasta, what the normal people call it. Yeah, <laughs> my grandfather always called it macaroni. He always called it macaroni and gravy. Yeah, and it's so weird when people are like, "Oh, you mean macaroni and cheese?" I'm like, "No, I mean macaroni. Like any shape, 35 yeah. shapes, all macaroni." <laughs> uh. Oh, God, I love it. I love it. I'm going to add on to that. What's your death row meal? Oh, my God. That's a hard question because I like I, – okay, death row meal. I mean, I would have to have a smorgasbord because it wouldn't have – okay, so it would include Wendy's French fries dipped in a chocolate frosting. It would involve uh, probably a whatchamacallit bar, black licorice, Snickers, mochi mochi ice cream, macaroni, my mom's meatloaf, and maybe grape leaves. Oh, and disco fries. You know, that's French fries oh. with gravy and dip, brown gravy with mozzarella. I, yeah. You could tell. I'd all, I'd eat that all in the one meal. My stomach's literally growling. Like, <laughs> that got me so hungry. What's your death row meal? Probably all of the things that you just said. <laughs> no, actually, I mean, usually I tell people like a burger and fries, which is true, but also all of the things that you just named. I literally, like, I'm the, I, I feel like I'm like the, a fun date, like, you know, for a man, but I'm also like a cheap date because like the date will be like, where do you want to go for dinner? You want to go to like Jean George? And I'm like, I'd like to go to the diner, please. Because I like all the options. I literally o- practically only eat at the diner. <laughs> I love that. Funny thing. True story. Today's my birthday. And I said to my son this <gasps> morning, birthday. I was like, what should we do? Thank you, sweetheart. And so I said to my son, I was like, what should we do for dinner? And he's like, I don't know. It's up to you, mom. And I was like, should we just get Wendy's? Yes. <laughs> Wendy's was my first. Me- I mean, you know, after I had my first daughter and I was, I got out of the house for that first time, that was my first thing I ate. Like most women are like, I'll have a kale shake. I was like, I'll have Wendy's. <laughs> yes. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I'll report back if I have Wendy's for dinner oh, this evening. Yes. So good. So good. All right. My, here's my last question. Ready? Mm-hmm, What's your favorite song lyric and why? 
My favorite song lyric comes from Barbara Streisand's Funny Girl, and it's Don't Rain on My Parade. And it's because, every, that's the name of the song, but it's because everybody's parade is different. Everybody's life is different. And we just have to, and, and, and so many people are judgy, and so many people have their opinions. And I struggle with that on the Upper East Side, you know, like there's all the moms, you should only eat organic, you know, or like that you're not going to private school, you know, or, or it's, or it's just, or it's just like my mother, like you're not raising a kid in a cul-de-sac. Like I, it's, it's don't rain on my parade. Like literally like you do your parade, I'll do mine. Like it's, you know, and that, that I feel like is like, like theme of life song lyric. Oh my God, I love it. You can't see right now, but I'm giving you a standing ovation Yay! because I love that so much. I love that. I mean, that really is the message of everything that we stand for here at Modern Mom Probs because everyone parents differently. You know, we we ha- experience our our motherhood differently. We experience our lives differently. And then like, just respect it and support each other. Right. That's it. Right. Don't, don't rain on my parade. Yes. Elise DeLucci, I love you. Tell everyone where we could find you and what's next for you. Okay. So you could find me on TikTok at Elise DeLucci. I would prefer if you watch me on TikTok, but I want you to follow me on Instagram at Elise DeLucci. <laughs> I'm launching my YouTube channel uh, just for people like that don't have TikTok. Like I have a lot of mom, 40s, 50s, 60s, 30s fans that are like, I don't know how to use TikTok. So I'm on, I'll be on YouTube very shortly, like literally in the next 24 hours. That's where you could find me. I am uh, the most, the biggest thing that I'm working on right now, which I would love to come back and talk to you on when and where we are fully, I have produced uh, and I'm in the current uh, mode of filming a documentary about a single divorced working mother trying to make it in stand up comedy. And it's a documentary. It's just about me in New York and LA across the country doing stand up comedy. It's at, uh, about being on mics, it's about being on shows. And the best part is that. We are, there's interviews littered throughout the documentary of big business people that have transitioned their careers from maybe corporate to doing something artsy. There are lots of interviews with really giant name stand-up comedians that are moms talking about the things that they sacrifice for, you know, for their job, you know, for, you know, or, or, or didn't sacrifice. You know, some women took off obviously to raise their kids. So that's the biggest thing that I'm working on right now. The working title is the real Mrs. Maisel, but we don't know if we're going to be able to get that title. But that's yeah. the, my big project right now. But yes, follow me on Instagram at Elise Delucci and obviously DM me and I would love to hear from all of your audience. Elise Delucci, thank you so much for being here. I adore you so much. And next time we have to go out for some macaroni and gravy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Ah. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Modern Mom Probs. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive in today's problem with me, your host, Tara Clark. Join me next time when I'll be interviewing another great guest and tackling another Modern Mom problem. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review and a rating. As always, you could head over to Modern Mom Probs on Instagram and give me a follow or check out my book, Modern Mom Probs, A Survival Guide for 21st Century Mothers, available online wherever books are sold. Well, that's it for today. See you next time, folks.